Hey everybody, you're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today we're gonna to do a quick video about LiPo batteries and LiPo battery chargers, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna start real quick by saying this is a very, very basic video, uh, and so if you already know a lot about LiPos, there may not be a lot of value in it for you, but if you're new to RC or if you just wanna learn something, uh, I hope you will stick around. I'll keep it short and we'll just cover some basics about LiPo batteries and then talk a little bit about chargers uh, and uh, that'll be that. So first of all, if you don't know, LiPo stands for lithium polymer and the whole thing with lithium polymer batteries is they pack a lot of power into a small, small package. This particular LiPo here is a 3S LiPo, which means it's got three cells. And you can actually see the three cells stacked on top of each other in this battery. And there's a clear plastic case around it. But each of those, each of those lines represents a flat cell. And that's where the lithium polymer is inside that container. And these three are, are wired together in such a way that it gives you the full power of all three cells. Now, these batteries are very safe unless you do one thing to them, well, two things to them, short circuit them or puncture them. Uh, short circuit them, you could break off the connector here and put those two lines together and it would short circuit and that would cause a lot of heat and sparks and that wouldn't be good. Uh, and then puncture, you know, you take a screwdriver, there's lots of people on YouTube doing that and they exude this really hot gas that comes out quickly and it basically ignites anything around um, them and that's what causes fires. Um, it, if this was next to your quadcopter or next to something flammable, it would catch fire from that heat coming off of it. It's a pretty quick process. And again, you can see YouTubers have, have done it. I, I, it's not something I'm gonna do here, but uh, that's why lipo safe bags are so good. If you have a lipo safe bag, you can put around this thing, charge it, and then if anything were to happen and this were to exude that gas, it would all be contained in that bag. That's the whole point of those bags so that it can't catch anything else on fire. The lipo safe bags don't stop these from having problems. They just stop that problem from uh, spreading. So there you go about this kind of lipo battery. And then we're gonna talk a minute about DJI lipos in just a moment as well. But before we do, I want to just really quickly explain what the uh, 3S, 4S, 5S, 2S means in a battery, as well as what the M uh, MAH stands for, milliamp hour. So let's start with the voltage and the S rating. Each cell is typically between 3 and 4.3 volts, or 4.35 volts. And so uh, if you average that, which is what the rating of the battery is, um, you'd say about 3.7 volts per cell. So 1S battery, one cell, it's gonna be 3.7 volts. A 2S battery, two cells, 7.4 volts. A 3S battery, three cells, 11.1 .1 volts, which is what this is, et cetera. So you just keep adding 3.7 volts. Now 3.7, again, is the, is the, is the middle ground, right? Um, you actually wanna charge it to slightly higher per, per um, cell, and then it will dissipate to slightly lower, but you never wanna overcharge or undercharge or, or uh, drain your battery too far. You never wanna put, even if the connector's the same, I did this one time, uh, I put a 4S battery in a 3S uh, race car and it fried the motor. So you don't wanna do that. Um, the second number though, milliamp hours, that can vary from thing to thing. You can put a 900 milliamp hour uh, battery or an 1800 milliamp hour battery onto the same device and it won't hurt it uh, as long as the uh, voltage is the same. Milliamp hours is basically how many amps or milliamps, depending on what unit of measurement you want to look at it in, can flow from this battery in one hour. So a 900 milliamp hour battery can flow 900 milliamps in one hour until it's completely drained. Now these batteries don't drain completely, so you're not going to get an hour of time out of it. Um, that's not what it means. It's just a unit of measurement, a way to compare things. Think of milliamp hours as fuel in your tank, right? The more milliamps that can flow out in an hour, the bigger the capacity of it. So if you had a 3S battery that was a 900 milliamp hour battery and you had a 3S battery that would work, both of them would work in the same device that was an 1800 milliamp hour battery, 
the 1800 milliamp hour battery is going to give you more flight time, driving time, whatever. It's going to last longer because it's got more fuel in the tank. So when you're looking at these things, make sure you get the voltage the same for whatever you're putting it on. And then, you know, higher milliamp hours tend to be longer lasting. So that's a good thing. So um, you again, as I said before, you want to make sure you don't drain these batteries all the way down um, or overcharge them. And that's where intelligent batteries come in. These two, this is one for the Phantom 4, and this is one for the Mavic Pro. And these are both actually aftermarket batteries, but think of them the same as DJI batteries, and I'll talk about that in a second. Both of these batteries actually have a uh, processor in them that's called a protection board. And that protection board is a uh, intelligent chip that actually regulates these batteries. It won't let you overcharge them. It won't let them drain too far. It talks to the flight controller, which in turn talks to your remote control so you can see how much is juice is in them. It talks to these LEDs and says, all right, light up three because that's how, how much, approximately how much juice I've got left. Um, that protection board is huge and it's something that's really, really important in these DJI batteries because it's also what allows them to calculate what the return home distance would be. So if you have it set to where it gets down too low and it will come home automatically, it actually calculates the distance um, and the amount of juice it has left and says, all right, I need this much battery to get back home before I crash. So I'm going to start returning to home at this certain point, which is pretty amazing, actually. One other thing the protection board does is actually drains these uh, batteries slightly if you sit if they sit for too long. The optimal um, storage for these is around 60, 65 percent um, full. So if you fully charge a battery and then you let it sit for more than 10, 20 days, the uh, protection board will actually drain the battery down to about 65 percent and then leave it there so that it will actually. Uh, be stored in the optimal condition for the cells and you won't damage the cells, which is pretty smart. So what am I getting at with all this? Well, a couple of things. Number one, um, to not overcharge or undercharge your batteries uh, with these kind of batteries, you don't need anything um, you don't need anything special because these regulate themselves. They, they will stop the charge uh, using that protection board. With these kind of batteries, these are dumb batteries. These have no intelligence, no circuit boards. They're just they're just cells and wires, and that's it, and some casing. These actually need a charger that will actually stop charging at the appropriate time and not overcharge them, and also will charge the right amount for the milliamp hour rating, and will charge the right amount for the volts. That's where this Tenergy comes in. I love this charger. This thing, I uh, probably got it three, three and a half years ago. It's super versatile. Uh, it's not very expensive, and if you're charging any sort of hobby battery that has a balance port like this on it, it can do um, multiple sizes, 2S, 3S, 4S, I think even 5S batteries, uh, which are pretty rare. And then you can actually swap out the connector here. This is a XT60, I believe, with uh, this breakout cable that's got a whole bunch of different connectors on it. And so all the different Dean's connectors and everything else here, uh, whatever kind of battery it is, you can actually charge it with this thing. So I highly recommend if you're into RC and it's not DJI or not a proprietary battery, uh, one that has these balance ports on it, that you get one of these uh, intelligent chargers and have it in your arsenal because it comes in great handy. It can also uh, discharge batteries for you, balance the cells for you. It does a whole bunch of things. And as I said, I've had this one about three, three and a half years, no problems at all. And they're not even that expensive. On the other side of the house, I wanted to talk about aftermarket chargers for DJI batteries. Now, I know there's some controversy there about whether using, um, actually using aftermarket batteries is smart or warrant or void your warranty. I don't, I don't know that it does or doesn't. I would imagine uh, if you crashed with it or if you had a claim and you were using one of these, DJI might point that out. I've never had a problem with these. I've had this one for over a year and I've had this one for maybe two years, year and a half at least, and flown many, many cycles on these. They behave just like DJI batteries. And the reason is because they have a protection board in them just like the DJI batteries do. As a matter of fact, they update firmware. Every time my DJI batteries need a firmware update, these do as well, and these update the firmware. So I, I think the drone treats them just like a DJI battery. And again, um, kudos to Power Extra because I have never had a problem with these. Now I was given these for review 
full disclosure, but I'm not paid by them at all. This is not a paid advertisement. I'm just telling you that for a lower price, because batteries are expensive, these things are pretty reliable and it might not be a bad idea to have one or two on hand as some spares, um, especially considering when the price of these is significantly less than the original DJI batteries. Um, then I also want to talk about Power Extras chargers. Now, I have also had, along with this original uh, Phantom battery, Phantom 4 battery, I also got this charger uh, with it about at least a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And I had no problems with this either. It's metal, which makes me feel really good. It has a big cooling fan in the back that keeps the inside really cool. Uh, it's noisy, I will say that, but I can charge three batteries and my remote at the same time. And again, I've never had any problems charging either my aftermarket battery or my original DJI batteries, plus the DJI remote control for the Phantom 4 with this thing. It's rock solid. Um, it's a little bulky, but again, I like it because it feels really solid. I leave it on my bench um, when I when I need it to charge. It's not something I would take with me out on a shoot or anything like that, but for coming home with seven or eight dead batteries that I need charged quickly, this is the one I use. And then same thing, Power Extra has one for the Mavic Pro, and the Mavic Pro one actually has USB ports, two of them here, and then the three Mavic Pro adapters. Now, one thing I wish uh, Power Extra would do, I think would be brilliant, is a removable cables, so you could actually charge different batteries. Although, maybe the the way this charges is very specific to the Mavic Pro. I don't know, but it does it does have a standard plug that can be plugged and unplugged, which is nice. And then it does have lights here that tell you the status of the batteries as they charge. And they all charge at the same time. It doesn't wait for one to finish before it starts the next, which is pretty awesome. And then finally, I just about, I'd say two months ago, uh, got this one here, and this is for the Mavic Air. And this one is a little smaller. This one is actually plastic, but it's kind of, I mean, it's nicely made. It feels like that sort of, you know, apple kind of plastic, for lack of a better word, not apple the fruit, but apple the brand. Um, it's, it's, it's well made, it's smaller, it has four, uh, cable, breakout cables for your Mavic Air batteries. And then it does have two USB ports here and then just a, a plug. It's not as big of a plug. It's quite a bit smaller than the other two. But um, I've used this numerous times now in the last month or two and have had no problems with it either. So I guess what I'm saying is I know there's a lot of people out there who are adamant against aftermarket batteries and aftermarket chargers and i respect that you know if that's your if that's your choice that's your choice but for me um i feel like the value in these things and the fact that they will charge all these things all these batteries at the same time quickly safely is is worth it to me uh, as far as getting these things charged especially when i am running through a lot of batteries and i need them all charged up quickly i don't want to have to wait for one at a time so it's pretty nice so that's it. Um, I'll leave links in the descriptions for all this stuff. Uh, if you want to check it out, check out the pricing. These things are also pretty inexpensive as far as chargers go. Um, all, all of the chargers I've shown you are pretty reasonably priced. Hopefully you got something out of the uh, talk about LiPo batteries and milliamp hours and voltage and um, optimal storage um, charge, etc. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you want to know more, I actually did a really in-depth um, video, gosh, two years ago with my friend Jason about LiPo batteries that goes into a lot more of the science. If you really want to nerd out about it, you can check that out. Otherwise, uh, I hope you'll just check out everything we do on Ready, Set, Drone. We're all about drone flying, drone safety, and having a good time. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.